and schools to communicate or present their uh, projects. Uh, I will uh, uh, try to talk on the basics because of this time limit uh, constraint. I will not be able to uh, do justice and give all the details on the PowerPoint, but I'll try to do my best to uh, you know touch the points which are very crucial for an effective PowerPoint presentation. So generally, we try to log in to PowerPoint uh, modules by using two different uh, modes. Many of you may be using Office 365, and also you can also log in through Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft 365, what we call it. Right. So the different basic difference is Office package comes with some other uh, um, group of applications like uh, SharePoint, Team. One uh, drive and one note, etc., which are very much useful for office workers or those who are who are into you know uh, corporate sector. And basically, uh, the teaching fraternity and students mostly they use the lower version. Lower version, you can say, in terms of uh, the facilities, is Microsoft uh, 365, right? Which we are familiar like Microsoft Windows uh, or, or, or Microsoft like Office. Word, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, all these things are in. The basic difference is not much except a few uh, applications which are uh, making this Office 365 more effective and more modern, you can say more modern kind of application. And it has a lot of uh, free um, goodies, you can say free facilities, which helps you to do the, the task more fast and more better. And the presentation is more of you know like uh, presentable or more beautiful if you compare to both these uh, things so you can use any of these and uh, basically today i'm using this microsoft version coming to the next slide if you see i have uh, listed some uh, important uh, shortcut keys which are to be used in powerpoint basically when we, we see that people generally they use uh, shortcut keys in uh, word and excel but many of them they are hesitant. They are hesitant, or they don't uh, find it convenient, or they don't have the practice of using shortcut keys in PowerPoint. But believe me, these shortcut keys make your job very much simple, and uh, they, they 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 save you a lot of time if you use them. Then generally, like I can give you some examples, like Control M is used for adding a new slide. So you have to just press Control along with M. That will give you a new slide. Similarly, if you want to start a new PowerPoint page, then you can press Control N. Similarly, you want to display the entire PPT what you have prepared. Suppose you have a you have prepared a PPT slides of five to ten slides, and you want to display them. No need to go to close them, open, or all these things. You just press F5, which will enable you to start the uh, PPT instantly. Similarly, F1 is uh, used for opening help page in the PPT. Many of the time, when you are struck, you want uh, to uh, take some kind of help, which has been uh, given in the Microsoft the help page. You can just press F1 and you can get that. Similarly, if you can press uh, like F7 or F, uh, F, F, uh, F, F10 also, those are uh, some of the things which will help you. Better. Similarly, escape is used for escaping the full presentation. Control D when you want to duplicate a slide page. You don't need to come, to come like entirely type the entire page. What you can do is you can just press Control D. So the previous slide, the previous slide which you want uh, to just manipulate or change a little bit in that, maybe in terms of numbers or names, or you can do that by just pressing Control D. It will give you a duplicate slide. Control G is used for grouping items. Like you have many different types of, uh, you have inserted many different type of uh, like uh, figures or uh, you know kind of uh, items. So you want to you know uh, group them together, then you can press Control G. Control T is for front menu, font menu. Like you want to change the font size, maybe Times New uh, Roman or Arial or some other uh, Comic Sans or something like that. You just press Control D. It will give you the front menu where you can just manipulate and you can change the front. Control A, Control Z, Control C, all these things we know. Similarly, Control B is used for bold 
making bold all the text. Control I is used for italic. Control H is to find and replace your word. Maybe you have made a mistake uh, in terms of typing some name or some uh, digit or something like that. Then you want to change it. No need to change it in uh, entire slide going one by one. Just you can press Control H and you can replace that word with the correct word. And uh, uh, all the slides will see the change. Similarly, Control W is used to close the presentation. And Control uh, plus mouse. When you press, it will show you a zoom of this slide. Like I can show you, right, like I now pressing, I am pressing the control plus mouse. It is showing you, it is showing you a zoom, right? So these are some of these uh, control shortcut keys which are used by uh, power, by the PowerPoint users. So which will make your job very easy. Now, uh, next slide, I am talking about different mistakes. I can say not mistakes also. Sometimes it is the wrong practices which are done by many of these PowerPoint users while preparing the PowerPoint. Basically, like many of them, they will have a black background. And uh, um, the black background generally does not look nice. And it is also not accepted in corporate presentations because the other person who is uh, uh, an audience, they feel it very difficult to you know read through the sentences or the words when the background is black. Similarly, standard design, many of them, they use the standard design. When you are using the standard design, which is given by PowerPoint, so I'll show you here, like uh, you can see this in design column, we have so many standard designs are given. So when you are using this standard design, many, many of these uh, audience, they feel that uh, they don't they lose interest because they have seen these designs for several times, for example, this uh, design, everybody is using this. When you start using this, the audience, they lose interest in this uh, uh, thing, right? So you need to avoid that uh, using standard design. Then uh, coming to uh, the next uh, point is that many of them, they use lengthy titles. When you make a lengthy title, uh, the audience they lose interest again they don't by the time they understand the title this slide they already you have reached the middle of this slide by your narration or by you know giving your explanation so they lose interest because of not you know um, finding it relevant or not getting the time to understand that thing so whenever you are giving a title just give it a very small title but it, the title should be appropriate to the presentation which you are making. But many people, what they do is they use standard text like introduction or reference or analysis. So when you say analysis, analysis of what? Analysis of the demographic factors or analysis of some kind of a market uh, market status or analysis of the product, analysis of the service. If you can mention that, that will make your job very easy. The audience will also find it very interesting when you are not using a standard text. Similarly, not guiding the audience. Many of the time, the titles which are selected by the presenters, they don't uh, gel with this uh, content and that, uh, that, that generally don't guide the audience to learn, like to understand what actually they are learning from this slide or what is this slide about or what is this presentation about. So that does not uh, go well with the presentation. So you need to avoid those uh, mistakes like lengthy title or standard text using in the title or not guiding the audience with a proper title. So you need to choose your title uh, very effectively or very, very, very uh, carefully, which will really mean or really give the the context like they give really the condensed version of your entire stuff which is preparing in the or which is shown in the uh, slide like this this slide you can see i have written very simply like mistakes in the in mistakes in preparing powerpoint so i have listed all the mistakes so it is it is it is it is complementing the context or the data which you are showing then too much of data and unrelated pictures are another uh, issue which uh, generally um, is uh, PowerPoint presentations uh, face. Uh, like I can, I can, I can give you this example.
you can see here too much of data. So avoid this kind of slides. Like you can see the top also, the heading is so lengthy that by the time you reach the end, you lose or you lost what is the actual sense it is trying to uh, tell you or what is the topic is all about. Like the moment you start reading, the three liner heading, avoid this kind of thing. Similarly, a lot of information, this many information uh, is stuck for five slides. Not It should not be included or it should not be registered in one slide. So avoid this kind of uh, uh, presentation slides. And uh, also another thing is like avoid uh, showing the pictures. Like many people add pictures which are irrelevant to the slide. Like here we are talking about defensive uh, function. And this uh, they are showing a picture of two small girls, which has nothing to do with this thing. And again, one more key point uh, when you are designing or when you are adding a picture, because many people feel that if they add a picture, then that slide will become interesting. It's not true. So many of the time, the pictures which you add, if it is not related to the slide, then that has no meaning. You are wasting a lot of um, real estate, uh, I can say this uh, slide real estate or the slide uh, area. Uh, which you could have used for something else or which would have been uh, used in a better manner. And also, when you are taking a picture, take the picture which is not having copyright. Many of, many of the time, people just go to the Google, download some picture and paste it here to make it attractive. That is not correct and that may lead you, uh, blend you in trouble. And also, it's not a good idea to have pictures of small children or adding cartoons or jokes or religious uh, content uh, to make the product or to make the PowerPoint uh, slides attractive. And also, uh, many of the time, uh, people also try to put in a lot of uh, different uh, information in one slide. Like you can see here, you can see there are four different types of charts uh, which are presented only in one because the student, they have to save uh, slide like uh, he was given a slide like you can present in five slides or ten slides so whatever he has got he put everything in one slide so also you can see there these all slides are different from each other all of them have a different texture or different uh, methods of preparation something is line something is bar something is horizontal something is vertical and uh, this this the person the audience who is watching this or who is learning from this uh, from data or from this uh, PowerPoint, he will lose interest. By the time he finishes one, he has to again change the mode, mode or he has to change his mindset to understand the other thing. So that will make the things difficult and the learning will be zero here. So another thing, like somebody has put a graph, which has so many difficult uh, 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 items, or so many items are there and uh, Understanding these items will be impossible, next to impossible for the audience with the short span of time in which he is seen. Also, the data, data which is uh, represented here or is uh, totally not visible and the data is not clear. So, the, the aim of presenting this graph is lost because the audience, they are not able to understand what is is about only they will listen to the voice of the speaker but they will not understand anything so avoid these kind of slides make these slides very simple line graphs you can but only few or take some of these only few important things which are necessary for your uh, presentation not don't try to clutter or don't try to bring everything one slide same thing here you can see somebody is trying to say so a graph of something or some map of something and you see this map is totally chaos so you cannot understand instead of that you can zoom in to the point which you want to show or take some other kind of graph or map which will easily show the route or something or what you want to uh, talk about so avoid this kind of things cluttered uh, maps or cluttered graphs So 
some more points uh, we, i will tell you or i'll show you some other uh, information things like uh, different type of charts and graphs uh, how to uh, embed i think many of them they know and you also you can uh, insert some uh, excel or word file or youtube also inside your uh, slides like say for example instead of all these suppose uh, I'll, i'll go to another slide so suppose uh, this is a new slide i want i have to put control n and now in this slide i want to display some of these word files so what i can do is i can go to insert and select the objectives object Uh, we'll talk about uh, the like you can see this is a very simple uh, um, this thing but you want to add your uh, uh, details so you can go to insert and you can add a head a header footer slide number right and uh, all these things so that you can have fixed or you can have this thing like this is iot presentation me 2023 so when you apply this it will be applied to all now you can see a header and footer and also a page number in the slide then you can also add some kind of uh, you know items like you can draw you can also write uh, uh, your uh, details this is very easy when you are using a um, code electronic code but here also you have this option similarly if you want to highlight something you have a highlighter also like black code black background is highlight so you have a highlighter also you can use this to explain when you are using this uh, students right so similarly if you want to add any kind of uh, shapes you can use this shape box go insert and add the shapes right so you have a lot of shapes here given so you can choose the one now here comes the concept of control using the control tool so you just press control and just drag so you can make a copy of this so suppose this both if you want to copy then just highlight and again drag by pressing control so you will get similar thing so you can repeat this one as much as time as many times as you can so you can have this four boxes or something like that right so this is another uh, uh, shortcut key which you can use like the control suppose you want to turn you are not happy with this uh, um, uh, this placement so you want to turn them and you can use control and alt like select all by pressing shift and you press control and alt then you can see this uh, you can change you can change the direction of these boxes just you have to use control and alt together so you can make different text text some right now we go to uh, we have seen the use of header slide number date and you can also use slide master suppose you want to insert some kind of logo or you want to change the color now i have deliberately kept it all these slides as uh, white so suppose you want to make all these slides into similar color then you can see here there is a slide master here so how do you go to see the slide master go to view go to view and when you click on the view you can come to slide master 
another way is that you can see the small icons here when you double click it also it will take you to slide master right so you can see this small icon here down the ribbon you can double click it so it will take you to slide master also when you double click it it will exit from the slide master so we go to the slide master by pressing on the view and suppose you want to change the color or you want to insert a logo like this to everything so you go to slide master insert then insert from uh, the picture or from the album or something where you want to uh, get like we can go get from this device so i have kept it in desktop like this this logo so when i insert it this one it will get inserted into everything so you can insert the logo in the slide master so this is somehow it is not working so that is how you can insert the pictures in this slide master similarly you can change the colors also in this one by going to the slide master background color background style all these color palettes are there so you can change all this right you can change to any color so that will take you to the change in color again second so they have a different type of uh, animations are there i am not spending more time on animations so this is how you can choose these animations uh, fade fly in and float all these thing how this text will be uh, appearing like when you give a animation you can see uh, i'll show you this one so you can see now this text is getting is so you can practice you can this you can see this one yeah, that means it is animated so you can animate all these things i will not spend more time on animation uh, we will uh, go to some other points right so another point is that you uh, can also you know revise your uh, you can also translate your uh, content into different languages like you can see here i select this one go to review uh, then translate when you say translate it will ask you from which language so you can uh, detect uh, to different languages you can select say hindi we will select then you can see this entire text has converted into hindi so you can use this uh tool translator tool to translate all your content into another language like in the english french 
uh, sorry, in Hindi, French, German, all another thing. If you have a group of students who are from another language, so you can select. So to go back again, you can do undo. So this is how, even you can uh, change these headings also. You can see here, PPT, slide, Asa, or something like that. Use of header footer, I have shown you. So similarly, you can translate also these slides uh, language by going to translate option, which many of us are not doing. If you have a different group of students from different languages, we can use this translate slide uh, to uh, or translate option to translate the content. Similarly, if you want to rehearse, suppose you want to uh, know how much is uh, the time which I'll take to, uh, you know, um, rehearse this uh, thing. So you can also do that uh, in the uh, record and the rehearse also. This option is there. So you can rehearse all your uh, thing by using a rehearsal aspect, right? So that is another thing. Uh, like you can also record here. So recording will uh, tell you, uh, you can record the content by giving your voiceover and you can also display them on the uh, YouTube or something like that, right? Then uh, you have another uh, option is called uh, uh, the text box. You can just write in something and you can use the text box to convert that into text. And uh, smart art, I will just tell you how to use this smart art also. So this is another thing. Another point uh, which I want to tell you is that uh, these slides, when you are making, you try to make uh, or follow the uh, format of seven by seven, right? So where seven by seven says that, there should be seven uh, bullet points and maximum seven lines in case of any slide, not more than that, right? So that is the seven by seven principle. We have also another principle which is known as pyramid principle, storytelling principle. I will talk about that a little later. So also, uh, we will, I will show you the organization chart, how it is created. Uh, Organization chart, I will just show you. Here you can go to insert and you have different smart arts. So if you can include any type of smart art, right? So, so that you can create a, a hierarchy structure. And there is a simple way of creating these hierarchy structures. I will show you that. Just one minute. Here you can see the organization chart, uh, which I have already prepared. I'll show you that. You can see here this organization chart. This is a director, is the or professor is the head of the institute. You have all the other things. So instead of uh, taking a lot of pain to include the uh, hierarchy chart and all this thing. So what you do is you just type like this. Suppose you want the first one to be on the uh, top. So the first bullet should be, and the other thing should be a subheading. So the subheading means it will take it as a subheading. So you do like this, like I have typed director is the first heading. Then HOD is the second subheading, COE or uh, the placement officer is the third subheading. So like that. Suppose you want under them something like a placement officer, assistant placement, then you have to put another uh, subheading under to that. Like I'm putting here, like here uh, deputy uh, deputy placement officer. So. Now you can, what you can do is you can highlight them and then you have an option, convert into smart art. Just choose the organization chart here and the entire chart will be done for you. You can see here, 
how easily I converted this text into a chart. No need to go insert everything, type one by one. What you can do is just remember the concept that anything which is on the top will have the first heading. Anything below that will be the second heading. Anything below that will be the third heading. You can see here how easily, just within two seconds, I have created, for two minutes, I have created this organizing chart. Let, let me give another example to you here. We can say we are creating a management chart like management for a management company, like CEO is the boss. So under him will be the like general manager, right? Under him will be the manager one, say MGR one. Under him, another will be man, manager two, right? And under him will be manager three. And under, under manager three, say for example, there is junior manager, right? Junior manager one, then uh, same cadre, junior manager two, right? So now this we need to convert into an organization chart. So just select, right click, you get the options here. Here, convert into smart art. Just go to the hierarchy chart. See, within no time, it is otherwise, earlier we used to enter one by one type, something will be big, something will be small, something like that. Suppose you want to add a, under junior manager one, another uh, person. So enter, you tap under him, like, you know, assistant. So once you finish, you can see here, assistant is working under junior manager. So this is how easily you can convert this organization chart by using this tool of, uh, you know, uh, pre, pre even or pre-installed options of organization chart or smart art, right? So now we go back to our own presentation. So here, another point which I want to uh, emphasize is that whenever you are presenting, just don't put them in the simple order. Try to bring in smart art or something like that, which will show the same content in a very interesting way. See, same content here, service, different types of service which the company is offering, say four slides, four different type of services. Four different type of services. Four different type of services which the company is offering. You want to talk about them. Service A, service B, service C, service D. So instead of showing them like that, what you can do is you can insert a smart app, like I showed you, and put the content in a very presentable format. So you can see the same content is now very nicely displayed here, different services by smart app. Similarly, I told you about control aspect. See here also, same content, which can be shown in a different method. And here, what you can do is you can also add some kind of pictures. You can see here, same content is displayed in a better or a very interesting manner. So this is how you can use smart art or the smart uh, gallery, which is given. Another concept which we use for uh, the um, PowerPoints is known as the pyramid principle. So anything what you want to do, you should try to follow the pyramid principle. Generally what happens, people talk about the problem and at the end they give the solution. Instead of that, you try to give the solution or the answer first or the the main issue or main concept first and then break it down to small options or small answers. So that concept is called as a pyramid concept. Here the information is presented in the form of a pyramid and the core idea or the main information is on the top and the breakdown of uh, or the finer elements or the small details will be in the 
bottom part of the presentation. So this is called as a pyramid structure of presenting any information. So the main content will be on the top and the supporting arguments or the supporting data or the facts will be presented in the bottom part of the structure. So like you can see here, I deserve a raise in salary. Suppose you want to give a presentation to your management showing your case or presenting your uh, argument or presenting your, uh, you know, your, your concern. So why you should uh, get a salary hike? Then your, your first will be point is I deserve a hike. Then why you want to, to get the hike? Because I got these this, this three activities done. And what are these activities? Again, these activities, you need to support them through your data or fact. Like you included uh, two new or uh, three new uh, dealers or uh, recruited three new uh, new clients. Then how much uh, business they are giving? Client one, client two, client three. Again, can, can be in the bottom part. So try to put all your content in terms of this pyramid principle. That makes the things very interesting. Also, you know, people don't like the running text. Nobody likes to see the running text, and everybody will remember it when you put it in a, in a in a graphical presentation. So this is how you can do. Like your answer should be first. It is to be followed by supporting argument, and then followed by evidence. Then again, all these things you can do by using the uh, charts, or you can use the uh, insert. Uh, this different type of structures which are already present in the field. Like here I can show you, I'm showing you the port piece. What is port piece? Instead of talking about product price place first, let me first talk about the marketing mix. What is marketing mix? It includes four elements, product price and promotion. And what does product include? Again, breakdown of product, breakdown of price, breakdown of place, breakdown of promotion. So things will be very interesting instead of putting them in a in a line or talking about them in isolation. You try to talk everything about uh, the concept in in one slide. The pyramid principle. So this is another principle which you follow to make this thing very interesting. Then uh, we have another concept is called as storytelling concept of PowerPoint. Here you must have seen all the books. Films, advertisements, everywhere, wherever you go, they try to uh, deliver the message in the form of stories. So similarly, PowerPoint, many people what they do is just they they have something they will just want to bring it into the PowerPoint. They just start making PowerPoint without thinking anything. Instead of that, try to you know build a story from the content which you want to deliver. To your audience first and then try to bring it down to the PowerPoint, then it will become very interesting. Instead of just putting information or data haphazardly, you try to build or link the points and build a story, and then you start making the PowerPoint, then things will be very interesting. So, this is called a storytelling concept in PowerPoint where you have to remember this SCR concept situation what is the situation what is the complication or what is the issue and how do we resolve bring resolution or how do we solve so this is called as scr resolution scr concept what is the situation what is the issue or complications or what are the problems then how do we solve them this concept you try to follow all through your content then it will become a very interesting powerpoint uh, presentation so you can see here, I have given an example, like my institute wants to grow and it wants to become a you know popular institute in, by the year 2030 or something. How do we do that? So we will be offering three, four different programs which will take us to the, uh, or which will make us famous or which will uh, make, bring, uh, you know, popularity among all these premier institutions. So we will offer BTA, we will offer MBA, we will offer uh, Mtech and we will offer PhD. Instead of just telling like that, if I, you know, take a path or take a, you know, road of kind of example, and uh, these are the milestones which we will cover. So if I build a story, everybody will remember what I'm saying and it will make a very huge impact on the audience instead of just 
telling like that or just telling the, the content like that so try to bring in powerpoint in the storytelling mode which is more effective and the main crux of powerpoint is that only you want to you your audience to remember your content and how do they remember only when you tell it in the form of a story most of the people they like stories and they will remember it for a long time and when uh, they when they go back from this uh, presentation there will be some takeaway points for them somebody must have remember phd somebody must have remember mtech somebody must have remember mpa so you have made your impression on them so this is not a very big deal just go to insert you can insert pictures and then you use this uh, different type of uh, uh, options like you can see here the draw you have draw or you have insert you have shapes are there i've used these shapes and uh, you, i have also used this uh, text boxes yeah, i have used the picture insert picture then i have used these uh, shapes right different shapes which i have showed you and i have created this story about the journey of my institute right so now which is very easy for everyone to remember now there is another concept which we call as uh, uh, guy kawasaki's 10 uh, 10 slide concept so people what they need to do is they need to remember this rule for while making this presentation that is the reason you see this this is 10 by 20 by 30 rule so there must be maximum 10 slides the presentation should not be lengthy than or not should not be longer than 20 minutes and there should not be the font size should not be very small less than 30 so the font size should be 30 so with that 30 font whatever uh, content you can include like you can see maximum you can do is seven lines which i gave you before like seven by seven seven colors seven days and you know seven stars we have if you remember seven stars we have in the sky so you can have seven bullet points and seven colors or seven sets so seven lines only you can have in your ppt so if you take 30 point size roughly you can include only seven lines in your ppt so it says maximum should be 10 slides and then it should be uh, uh, 20 minutes and it should be 30 uh, points for this uh, text size should be 30 so that is when you see many of these uh, good presentations like this TEDx and other uh, good uh, um, platforms which where they give uh, um, place to the speakers they don't have uh, you know episodes or they don't have the duration more than 20 minutes because there is a study they say that after 20 minutes people lose interest in the slides people lose interest in the learning so it should be maximum 20 minutes so they have already if you go to the um, kawasaki's uh, uh, 10 deck 10 presentation deck he has given different type of uh, uh, slides which will be useful you can customize them and make your uh, presentations based on this content you some somewhere you have to delete somewhere you have to add the content and that is how you can make a very effective presentation this is a here he has given a 10 slide presentation which where you can pitch in your organization or present your organization like you can talk about problems opportunities business model who is the management team value proposition go to market plan financial projections underlying magic uh, then the competitive analysis right and uh, of course the title slide so that is how you can make this presentations more effective by following this 10 by 20 by 30 formula now going back or you can say going forward uh, the, how can we ignore the concept of you know ai tools which are which are now the talk of these days like people use now students are also you can see many students use these ai tools to create powerpoint presentation there you don't need any kind of skill unless you just need to have your uh, you know grip on this subject or you should be a master in your subject then only you can identify uh, how these things are uh, or the content is good or not so uh, these are so many uh, open uh, ai tools which will uh, help you to create uh, powerpoint creation 
my favorite one is the tom app i will show you how you can create here so when you go to this uh, tom app the people some people use chat gpt but uh, i feel this is good so i can uh, just it will ask you to uh, you know uh, register with your uh, id so i am registering with my gmail so the moment you go there you can see this uh, screen right so here in the left side you have so many things in the right side you have they they also give you some complimentary you know pre installed uh, or pre pre suggestions pre pre prepared uh, ppt suggestions you can also prepare on them or if you want you can also create new ppts from here you can see the right hand side top corner there is a create button so when you prepare press on this it will give you a small window so here you can see you can find so many options like add text create page about create presentation about so you can click on the create presentation about so i will say then this window or this uh, box opens so here i can say prepare a powerpoint sorry powerpoint on point on marketing mix or i can say like on four rupees of marketing with example and pictures so press enter and you see it is going to prepare the powerpoint for you and uh, you can see here it has started prepping powerpoints for me same thing with chat gpt also they will do you can see it has given a title slide also and it has also given title slide then the second slide is talking about the four piece price place product promotion then you can see in the slides there is also pre prepared product product it has given the picture of a mobile phone then price then uh, please then promotion then at the end also it has given conclusion so see it has presented it has prepared the presentation for me along with this uh, along with this pictures and also the content i need to as an expert i need to review the content just don't give up to the content like read the content if you know content is okay then you can transfer this and you can say this as a ppt same thing you can uh, you can you can you can uh, also change this thing instead of this thing for four ps you can say product life cycle also i'll prepare this one so now it is it is preparing powerpoint for me on product life cycle it takes some time maybe 2 3 minutes so you can see so it has given a powerpoint for me on product life cycle so it is including four stages introduction growth maturity decline correct so also it is giving details about each stage introduction growth maturity decline and also it is giving some examples because i have asked for example so it is also giving me example so i can take this and also i can use them for my thing so this is how 
so many things are also there which are not told. I talked about uh, translation, which is a very good uh, thing which you can use. You can also rehearse. You can also rehearse. There is a, you can go to this uh, 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 rehearse slide and you can also uh, rehearse on the slides how much time it is going to take. And uh, you can also uh, use this chat GPT or Tom uh, or so many other uh, websites which I have for preparing uh, different uh, PowerPoints, right? So you can see this. OpenAI is uh, related with chat GPT, but the other things are also free and you can create them. So this is uh, this thing. So this is how we end. I know many of the points which we have not covered, but uh, this is a very short period of time. I think I thought these are the key issues which I need to address or give you because many others can really talk about the basic things. So these are some of the two topics, new areas which you need to explore. Even another thing is that you, when you want to save, you can also save, go to this export, and you can also create videos. You can see here the same PowerPoint. You can make a video. Or you can also prepare it in a PDF. You have the option of also, you know, preparing uh, with a, a kind of a movie kind of thing. Also, you can do the uh, same thing. The moment you ask it, it will ask you uh, to create a video with how many seconds or how many duration. So based on the duration, it will divide the slides, the differences, the intervals, and it will prepare the same slide. Uh, which I have shown you into a video, or you can also prepare it as a handout. So you can, the moment you ask for a handout, it will ask you how many handouts one, two, four, like that. So you can, you have all these choices. You just need to explore these options, right? So you can also share them uh, to the internet, right? So so many uh, options are there. Slides so will help you to. Rehearse the timing. Suppose I want to uh, rehearse this one. Just I go to the slide show. I put rehearse timing. So this one here you can see some timing. I will I say I will take three minutes. This slide I will take one minute. This slide I will take one minute. So this slide I will take one minute, right? Or this slide I will take zero minute. So this is how I need to choose my timings, and so it will ask you. Total uh, timing is 21 minutes. I'll say yes. Then when I put uh, the beginning, it will it will change the slides automatically. You can see it's changing the slides automatically. And uh, another good point is that you can just click on this one and it will show you these timings. So you know which slide I'm taking how long. So based on that, you can. You know, when you are presenting, you can like pace your uh, uh, delivery accordingly so that you can match the time. There are so many things which we can uh, use in this one. Again, you can see a recording voice here. So you can record your voice and also present this uh, thing, right? So this is how we come to the end of uh, this PowerPoint presentation. Thank you.